Hare Krishna. 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 So can we begin, Prabhu? Hare Krishna, Krishna Keshava Prabhu, can you hear me? No. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I can hear you now, yes, sorry. Oh, okay. We can... Okay, can I ask everybody to mute themselves apart from Maharaj, please? Om um, um, Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So we welcome everyone to our third session on the Nectar of Instruction for the Bhakti Shastri course. In the last class, we introduced the different terms for the six items which are favourable and the six items which are unfavourable. So I expect all of you are familiar with these terms now and I assume also you've read over the text. So we're going to look at some points. Uh, let me switch into screen sharing. Oh. You have to make me a co-host, Prabhu. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay. Just top. Okay. You got my desktop now? Yes, got yes. Okay. Right. 
we covered the six favorable activities. Now Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has given us some guidance here about verse number three. He said the first three attitudes, and namely Utsahan, Nesjayat, Dariyat, these are the attitudes which are very favourable for the cultivation of bhakti. And then the other half of the verse, tat tat karma pravartanat sangat chiyadat sato vriti, this is how the devotee should conduct his life. So that's advice from Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada introduces a number of uh, Sanskrit terms which all the students should be familiar with. So we want to make sure you're all familiar with the living entity is described as the Tatasta Sakti. Tatasta Shakti, right? In the middle here and on the right we have the Antaranga Shakti. Antaranga Shakti, meaning the spiritual energy, living entities, marginal potency of the Lord. Antaranga refers to the spiritual energy. Oh. And on the left, the material energy, Bahiranga, Bahiranga Shakti. Srila Prabhupada described here, we have a, from a, a a lecture which Srila Prabhupada gave in Los Angeles describing about the nature of the living entity, how he is tatasta, how he is marginal. In Los Angeles, the temple is at, you know, you know, it's not far away from the beach, the Pacific beach. And Srila Prabhupada would often walk on the beach in the morning. Prabhupada liked to go for a morning walk wherever he was. Doctor had told him actually, doctor had advised him, Swamiji, you need to go for a walk. So every morning Prabhupada was very strict, he'd walk for about an hour or more every morning. Very good for health. So Prabhupada said in, in the morning lecture, he said, we have translated Tatasta, we have translated into marginal, just like we go on Pacific beach. Someday we find the water is covering the beach. Someday we see it is open, there is no water, so that is called marginal. Sometimes it is covered by water, sometimes there is no water. Similarly, we being marginal potency, we are sometimes influenced by this material nature, not always. Alright, so we want to uh, understand the position of the living entity here, tatasta, situated between the material energy and the spiritual energy. We learn from the first verse about the urges, uncontrolled urges, right? Who would like to tell me the six urges? Someone? Someone can tell me the six urges? Um, Acharya Nanda Prabhu. Yes, uh, urges to speak, urges of the mind, urges of the anger, urges of the tongue, belly and genitals. Okay, very good. Thank you Prabhu. Okay, so then we spoke about the, when these urges are uncontrolled, then the result is we get these six unfavorable activities or you may say attitudes. Some are activities and some are attitudes. Can someone please tell us 
What are these six uh, unfavorable activities or attitudes described in text number two? Let's go to Damodar Dina Pavana Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. The first one is eating more than necessary or selecting more forms than they required. Yes. Second one is over endeavoring of mundane things that are very difficult to obtain. Third one is talking unnecessarily about mundane subject matters. Fourth one is following the rules and regulations, regulative principles, only for the sake of following them, not for their uh, spiritual advancement. Or rejecting the rules and regulations given in the scriptures, working independently or mythically. Fifth one is associating with the non duties who are not interested in Krishna consciousness. And the last one is being greedy for mundane achievements. All right. Thank you, Prabhu. So you can see when we when we have these, you can see in the diagram here on the screen, when we have the when the urges are uncontrolled, that results in the unfavorable activities, and the result is we are situated in the modes of rajas and tamas, in the modes of passion and ignorance. That's the nature of the material energy. We're in the material energy under the control of passion and ignorance, under the control of the material energy. We're always controlled. And you can see at the bottom now, we've added the word dur-atma. Dur-atma, meaning? Someone like to tell me? Who knows the meaning? Dur-atma? An unfortunate soul. An unfortunate soul. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunate soul. Dur-atma, described here. We have a quote from Srila Prabhupada, from the purport. Such mentally crippled duratmas are put under the control of the Lord's external potency, Mahamaya, whose business is to subject them to the influence of threefold miseries. Yeah, duratma means crooked soul, a fallen soul. Just the opposite of Mahatma. Mahatma is a great soul, a pure soul, pious soul. But Duratma, fallen soul, fallen, he's under the control of the material energy. And because he's under the control of the material energy, results in the threefold miseries. First of all, Adi Admika Klesha, miseries due to our body and mind. You can see in the, di in the picture, man is suffering, the mind can give us so much trouble, the body, so many parts, every part of the body can give us so much trouble, so much pain. To get pleasure from the body is so difficult, but to get misery is very easy. This body is made to give us misery. The body and the mind, they give us, make our life miserable. But we're trying to enjoy. And then another kind of misery, due to other living entities. Beside the terrorist, you have also, you have the miseries due to dogs, mosquitoes, miseries due to uh, neighbors, so many different living entities can give us misery, make our life miserable. And then finally, the third one, misery is due to natural calamities, like earthquake, tsunami, uh, famine, drought, flood, these things. Alright, so this is the, the living entity when, when the urges are uncontrolled, 
then we come under the material energy. But if we contact the pure devotee, if we are fortunate, come in touch with a devotee and we start practicing Krishna consciousness, then we get the seed of bhakti. Right? Bhakti Lata Beej, the seed of devotion planted in the heart. And then, under the direction of the devotees, then we begin to control the urges. Urges are controlled by Krishna consciousness. You can see at the top of the diagram, urges are controlled by Krishna consciousness. And when the urges are controlled, then the unfavorable activities and attitudes are avoided. And instead we cultivate the favorable activities and the favorable attitude. And when we do that, then that situates us under the spiritual energy, under the antaranga shakti. And when we're situated under the Antaranga Shakti, then devotee becomes a Mahatma. You see we added the word Mahatma at the top right hand corner, Mahatma. It's under the, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Mahatmanas Tamamparta Daivim Prakriti Mashrita. The great souls are under the protection of the divine energy. So divine energy is the antaranga shakti, the spiritual energy. Hmm? Okay. Srila Prabhupada describes Mahatmas. Oh, here's the verse from the Bhagavad Gita. Many of you will know. They're fully engaged in devotional service and they know Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So they are Mahatmas, they're great souls, they're not deluded and they're protected by the Divine Energy. Okay. You can see on the right we've put also sattva gun, the mode of goodness. The Mahatmas are in the mode of goodness or pure goodness even. We've added also from the Bhagavad Gita at the top, under the six urges controlled by Krishna consciousness, what is night for all being? is the time of awakening for the self-controlled. And at the bottom, and the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective sage. And so, point, the, the opposites, the, the, the Mahatma and the Duratma, or the devotee and the non-devotee, or the, the sense enjoyer, the Duratmas, they're materialists, they're sense enjoyers. So they're in the mode of passion and ignorance, and the devotee is situated in the mode of goodness. Prabhupada explains in the purport, one must promote himself to the platform of goodness, sattva gun. By following the instructions of Rupa Goswami, then everything concerning how to make future progress will be revealed. Right? So we have to follow, follow the instructions, that's the point. Then come up to the mode of goodness. And from the mode of goodness, then we can transcend. So the first uh, obstacle or the unwanted activity or attitude which we want to avoid is atyahara. Overeating or over collecting. The whole world is affected by it. We quote here.
from the purport, religion entails understanding the laws of God, because the proper execution of these laws ultimately leads one out of material entanglement. That is the true purpose of religion. Unfortunately, people accept religion for material prosperity because of atyahara, or an excessive desire for such prosperity. Of course, this, is, uh, this kind of religion is rejected in Srimad Bhagavatam. Those of you who are familiar with Srimad Bhagavatam will know the second verse of the first canto, first chapter, how Srila Vyasadeva said, Dharma Prajata Kaitava Traparamo That this, this Srimad Bhagavatam completely rejects all religion which are materially motivated. And so Prabhupada is pointing out that this is, it, it's unfortunate that the world today, they think of religion as simply being there for economic development. And with economic development, they'll have more sense gratification. So that is material religion. That is not actually spiritual. We are teaching what is actual religion. The real purpose of religion is to awaken love of God, to understand God in our relationship with Him, develop love for for God. But People are thinking religion is just something for our economic development, for our material life, take care of our family, keep us all healthy, keep us all wealthy. <laughs> they have so many mundane conceptions about what is religion for. So this is all atyahara, because we're so attached, we're so attached to eating and collecting, we want to make ourselves more comfortable in a temporary world. We know we have to leave here one day, nobody's thinking about it. Okay? So how may devotees be affected by Ajahara? We'd like to hear from the class. Some of anybody would like to give some suggestions how some devotees could be influenced by Ajahara? I'm sure you, you I'm sure none of you could be influenced by Ajahara. <laughs> but you Chandra Prasad probably wanted to put, say something there. Yes. Go on, Chaitanya Prabhu. Diksha Maharaj Pranam Maharaj. <clears throat> Sometimes Maharaj uh, like you were hearing I'm hearing some lectures and I said no, I want to explain to someone. Like it's giving coming pride. Uh, Maybe uh, it looks like you no, know, I'm getting something, but uh, want to you know, text, show someone that you know, I know something. It's a one of Atiyar Mara. Because I'm collecting taking yeah. this knowledge not for my own de spiritual development, but for the sake of showing you know, I know something, mm -hmm. I knew something. Ah, ah. Yes, interesting. Yes. We, we become more like, we want to be like a scholar. We're more interested in our scholarship than in, than in our devotion. Yes, interesting point Prabhu, thank you very much. Yeah, pe sometimes as devotees we have that mood. We just want to show that we know something rather than actually feel something. Can we go to Muri Govinda Prabhu? Nanad Pranam Maharaj. <clears throat> See, like we being devotees, sometimes we show over enthusiasm about uh, many things, like even just like uh, Prabhuja shared about preaching activity and uh, gaining this knowledge, do just knowledge, uh, will it be really useful for? 
teaching activity or even self realization i have that apprehension models mm-hmm. okay yeah so will the knowledge will we be actually be able to use it is it going to help us to come closer to krishna so similar point to the point which was made first yes anybody else harsha mataji is commenting that dwelling on unlimited thoughts and getting carried away and wasting hours on wasteful thoughts and emotions <laughs> yeah I, mean, i think we all have we could all be guilty of that yeah and jagai nithai prabhu har krishna um so as a householder and a small business owner i can i can force and push to try to build and create more wealth and to have a better situation and work to try to collect 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 or i can be peaceful and allow the the natural pra- process that krishna has in store for me unfold so that i have more time and more mental clarity to engage in krishna consciousness chanting my japa reading and studying so atihara would be that that urge and that endeavor to collect more and more yes interesting realization inter- interesting point pro thank you very much certainly true but if you open a business you have a little business then naturally you want the business to grow and your whole meditation becomes you know how to expand the business and how to improve things of course in a sense it has to be like that to stay alive you have to think like that you can't just simply maintain you have to you have to actually go forward in our krishna consciousness movement we also find like that we have to always be thinking about going forward if we just simply try to maintain then we will go down so you know you try to you always we always have to think how to get new devotees because you're going to lose some devotees in course of time you know people move away somebody may leave the body so that your devotees may go down so you have to always be thinking how to get new devotees and so is it wrong is it <laughs> no in relation to krishna we have to dovetail the mood the attitude not just collecting more than necessary but trying our best anyway to in- expand and increase and so similarly you have a business like that you have to think also you you have to be practical yeah you cannot just simply sit back and wait for everything to happen you have to put some energy into it okay thank you prabhu anybody else would like to contribute something maybe one more can we, can we go to shama kunda prabhu he hasn't spoken before yet as a deputy we try to offer the best to the lord for example offering homes but the problem is that uh, and then we try to enjoy it more than necessary like that, uh, offering prasadam more than uh, necessary that's all thank you okay honoring prasadam more than maybe we need yeah <laughs> we had a big feast naturally there's a big feast prasadam will be opulent we have very expected to take more mm, to prepare ourselves for that also you have the fast like a couple of days back through the prabhupads festival we fasted in the morning so when you come for lunch you're, re- you're re- re- ready to eat <laughs> and so you can eat more and take more than we usually take okay thank you very much we'll go ahead 
Certainly, we can be affected by Atyahara as devotees. Uh, therefore, here is Rupa Goswami's definition. Right? I think many of you may know this verse also. When one is not attached to anything, but at the same time accepts anything in relation to Krishna, one is rightly situated above possessiveness. Right? We're not attached to anything, but we accept it in relation to Krishna. So that should be the mode. See everything in relation to Krishna. Nirbanda Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Mochati. Yukta Vairagya, right? Detachment in relation to Krishna. So use everything in the service of Krishna. And that is above, that is not being possessive if we're using it in Krishna consciousness. Another quote at the bottom here, which is taken from Srimad Bhagavatam, describes that a Brahmana who is satisfied with whatever is provin providentially obtained is increasingly enlightened with spiritual power. But the spiritual potency of a dissatisfied Brahmana decreases as fire diminishes in potency when water is sprinkled upon it. So we see the importance of uh, being satisfied, one of the qualities of a brahmana. And a brahmana, of course, is a symbol of the mode of goodness. So if we want to cultivate the mode of goodness, we want to have that We want to have that mood of be being satisfied. Maharaj, you have a couple of questions. Would you take a couple of questions at this point? All right. If um, let's go first to Murali Govinda Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Dr. Pranam Maharaj, recently one of our senior God brothers uh, just he shared with me that uh, why you are going to Bhakti Sasri uh, and you will be spending a lot of time on reading the books, on understanding the books, attending the classes and all. It is just that you can uh, focus on more of uh, reading the books of Prabhupada and uh, doing more service to the devotees. How do we understand Maras on this issue? How do we respond to that? Yes, Maharaj. Well, you have to explain to the devotee that your purpose in studying the Bhakti Shastri is to facilitate your service to the devotees. That after you study Bhakti Shastri, then you can go and teach more. You can teach what you've learned in the Bhakti Shastri. You may even go on and become a teacher yourself of the Bhakti Shastri. As Srila Prabhupada wanted the devotees would take part in these kind of classes. He wanted that we, we would study Bhakti Shastri and Bhakti Vaibhava, Bhakti Vedanta, like that. Way back in the 1960s, Srila Prabhupada introduced Bhakti Shastri and had devotees write, answer questions, told them he would give them the Bhakti Shastri certificate. And so your purpose in studying is to, fit, to improve your mood, your, your, your qualification as a devotee preacher. It's an, important. You, you're also showing an example to others that you study Bhakti Shastri, they should also want to come and study. It's part of Srila Prabhupada's plan that the members of ISKCON should study. Now, often in the temple, you may give class in the temple, you find that, you know, there's a few people, and some are interested and some are not interested, people don't often pay attention. But when you come to Bhakti Shastri, it's a very different mood. Devotees are much more serious, everyone's come to study. It's a very intense, pure atmosphere and it's very good for our Krishna consciousness. 
So you can answer to him like that. Explain to him the, how your purpose is for your service to Krishna. Thank you, Mara. Thank you so much. And what? Uh, we've got one more question from Satchinandana Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, thank you for a long week. Uh, Mara, uh, regarding to this uh, verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, I wanted to understand that what is the act, uh, meaning of uh, being satisfied with what is providentially provided. <coughs> so, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it, it is it is obvious that for anything one has to do some endeavor for attaining anything even if it's providentially one has to do endeavor one cannot just say that I'll sit and whatever is uh, providentially provided will come to me on its own accord one has to work in the material world and simultaneously uh, being in any profession uh, one uh, wish to excel with it so it, we may have to increase his uh, working uh, hours or we have to do some smart work so that in less time he manages to get more out of it. So uh, what is the actual uh, understanding of this being satisfied from whatever is providentially provided and simultaneously being uh, staying in Sadhavana, uh, not in Tamogana of uh, uh, laziness? Uh -huh. Yes, well, you, you say everyone has to make some effort to get something, but not everyone did. You know, Sudama Vipra, he didn't go and beg at all. He wouldn't beg. Of course, he was very poor. They had no food at home. But he had that, you know, that was his mood. And similarly, Madhavendra Puri, Madhavendra Puri, he, had, he wouldn't eat. He would only, somebody came and gave him food, he would eat. He would not beg. He didn't go and beg to, and ask people for food. If people came and gave him something, then only he would eat. And Krishna came personally gave him. So some people, they really, they really surrender and they just simply depend on providence. Now, usually, however, a brahmana is allowed to beg. So he will go, he can go and beg and by providence, somebody may give and somebody may not give. He accepts whatever is the arrangement of providence. But he will not make extra endeavor to try to satisfy his material senses. He will simply accept whatever conditions he's placed in with, according to his duties as a brahmana. Right? He's the brahmana. He's allowed to do certain things. He's allowed to teach and he's allowed to study and worship and he's allowed to beg, and he's allowed to give. He can do these things. So he will do his duty, and he simply depend on whatever is the plan for, by the Supreme Lord. By the will of providence, he may be poor, just like Kolaveka Sridhar was very poor. He had some banana trees, and he, whatever kind of fruits he got from the banana trees, and banana flowers and so on, he would sell them and he would maintain his living. And whatever income he got, he always spent 50% to worship Mother Ganga. But he, he didn't, well, even when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked him to request something, he said, no, 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 I'm happy, I'm satisfied, I don't need anything. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew he was very poor. His home was broken down and his cloth was very old and ragged. But Sridhar said, I'm happy, I'm satisfied, whatever I get, by the will of the Supreme Lord. So that is providence. That is how a Brahmin should be, that he should not be endeavouring just to get more wealth, just simply for his own comfort. But simultaneously, he used to work for Lavicha Sridhar, he used to sell bananas and all. Well, that was, it, that, was his, that was his occupation. He did his occupation and he did it honestly. 
Yeah, you do your occupational duty. You don't do more. You know, his occupation was to grow, you know, he had this land and he grew, grow bananas and he would sell them. That was his occupation. He didn't make a lot of money. He didn't say, oh, I'm going to quit this, I'm going to go and live in Calcutta and find a job, make more money. No, he was happy. Whatever was given to him by the will of providence, he accepted that. And he used 50% to worship Mother Ganga and he was happy, he was fully satisfied because he was chanting the holy name, because he was a great devotee. His, his mind was peaceful. He was not greedy to get more. So if, uh, if running a business one like makes some plans for expanding the business or making the some smart work or getting things managed, in the same time, whatever he time he uh, gives to his business, would that be called greed or would that be called intelligence? Yes, you may make some plans, you, but your plans may not be successful. Just because you make plans doesn't mean you're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Somebody may make plans, all right, you make plans and you try to improve, but if you're not successful, you don't lament. And in the same way, if, if you make plans and they are successful, you don't go on making more plans to try to get more success. You know, you don't become more greedy for more and more. But yeah, that is a trap actually. It's difficult. That's a that is the problem, right? The more you get, the more you want. Yeah, that's the problem. So the point is to be satisfied. You know, something comes, you get a bit more. Oh, very nice. But be satisfied. The important thing is to keep up our to keep a balance with our spiritual practice. We have to have some time to chant and to read. We have to have some balance, the material life and the spiritual life. Don't sacrifice the spiritual life just simply for the material. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just add something to, to that conversation, Maharaj? Please. Um, and you will come to this later on when you come to study Isha Upanishad, um, is that our Shastra actually instructs us that there is actually a quota for each and every one of us. Um, and no matter how much we may try to over-endeavor, we will only actually always achieve as much as our quota will actually allow. Those other endeavors may very well be successful if they're not within our given quota. Anyway, you come to this when you come to do Shri Upanishad, but I thought it was worth mentioning there because um, the point Maharaj made was very, very relevant there that we can try and try and try and, you know, endeavor to do various activities, but they may not always be successful. Um, just something to think about. It's in the first mantra of uh, Isha Upanishad. Okay, thank you Prabhu. Very nice. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll go ahead. Now talking about blasphemy of a Vaishnava because we've spoke about prajalpa, prajalpa idle talk, and idle talk often deteriorate, deteriorates into this kind of thing, that it becomes blasphemy against a devotee. Because idle talk, generally we talk about people, and we talk about people and we, you know, we have our own opinions about this person and that person. Did you hear this? Did you know that? Yeah. So we mentioned here the four different kinds of blasphemy which may be done to a Vaishnava. Important to remember, if we blaspheme a Vaishnava for his or her apparent low birth or caste. Right? That's, 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 that's aparad. Another one? If we blaspheme someone for previous sinful activities prior to one's surrender to Lord Krishna. You know, just like Jagai and Madhai. <laughs> you know, they became, they became great devotees. But before they became devotees, you know, they did a lot of sinful activities. So if somebody criticizes them, then that's, that was an offense if you criticize. Another one, number C. To blaspheme a devotee, a Vaishnava, for some unpremeditated accidental fall down. 
So someone may do something, but just somehow by accident, un didn't think about it, you know, just somehow just spontaneously did, did something that was wrong. So we shouldn't criticize them for that. Of course, if they make a habit of it, then it's not accidental, it's not unpremeditated. But it's like a one-time thing. And finally, D, to blaspheme a Vaishnava for the last traces of his or her previous sins or faults that are almost rectified. So we become devotees, and before we were devotees, many of us had the habit of engaging in activities which were not religious, which were not pious, sinful activities. So sometimes the trace, these traces of these activities may still be within us, take some time to remove them, and we shouldn't criticize someone who has almost got rid of the traces. <laughs> Subtle, very subtle. You see, very careful, we have to be very careful. So talking about devotees is really not a good thing to do. You have to be very careful because it can run, easily run into an offence which can cause disaster in our spiritual life. Okay? All right, now moving on to another quality which we're going to look at, niyamagraha. Right? Remember this? So we'll put here the definition, how there are two parts to this. Practicing, but only for the sake of following them and not for spiritual advancement, or rejecting the rules and regulations, working independently or whimsically. So we're going to put you into groups here now, today. We're going to try a little group work, give you a chance to get to know each other a little better. We'll make some groups and we want you, in, in each of your groups, to come up with some applications, which some ways in which Srila Prabhupada adjusted, adjusted these details, adjusted the details of the rules and regulations, but at the same time kept the principles, right? Prabhupada's mood. I put at the top of the slide, Niyamagraha, Prabhupada's mood in adjusting details and maintaining principles. You know, principle would be like, I'm a vegetarian. A detail is, well, here's some, here's some uh, Italian spaghetti, you know, it's vegetarian. And do I have to eat Italian spaghetti? No, you could eat, you know, chapati and or you can eat chapati, or you can eat Italy and dosa like South Indian. You know, so many different things are vegetarian. So these are details, what you eat. But the principle is to be vegetarian. So we, we want you to come up with some points, how Srila Prabhupada, as a founder Acharya of ISKCON, how he adjusted these details, but at the same time maintained principles. So, Krishna Keshava Prabhu is going to put you all into groups. Okay, so there are about 33 or 34 people on the board, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assign some automatic groups on Zoom, and you'll be invited to join, a little message will pop up, where you'll be invited to join a little subgroup. Please join the subgroup that you are invited to join, and that will take you out of the main session and into a private little Zoom session of your own. You don't need to disconnect, you don't need to do anything else. Just accept the invitation to join that room or join the room. And there you'll, you'll be put with other people in your class. Now you'll all be mixed up because there's several different people in this group. I don't know where you are, I don't know very much about you, so you're going to have to use this opportunity to get to know each other and talk about this subject of Niyamagraha. We'll give you 10 minutes to talk about this subject and then um, I will visit each room, maybe Maharaj will be able to visit each room too, and um, to see how you're getting on. 
and then we will come back into this room after 10 minutes and you can feedback your realizations on this topic of Niyamagraha. Is that clear to everybody? Yes. Okay, all right. <laughs> Murli Govinda Prabhu, did you want to ask a question there? Something's not clear? Ah, yes, Prabhu. Can I? <coughs> no. Can I ask? Is it, is it a question because we want to go into the groups now, or is it a question about the group activity? Uh, no, not group activity. Okay, so then, then save it for a bit later so that we don't lose the flow of where we are, if that's okay. Okay, Prabhu, you okay? All right, Prabhu, thank you. All right, so then I'm going to create six groups. So there should be four to five people in the group. Please join the group and, you know, discuss. So that's it. Somewhere on your screen you will see an invitation. Somewhere you can accept an invitation. I see you're all disappearing off the board. That's good news. Okay, good. Raktim Prabhu, you need to join a group there. Okay, that's good, everybody's joined. So Maharaj, yes. can you see on the bottom of your screen something called breakout rooms? Yes. So if you click on that, uh -huh. you should get a list of breakout rooms in progress. Join, it says join breakout room four. Oh, it's asking you to join, is it? Yes. Okay, oh, I didn't want you to join. Um, <laughs> unless you want to join breakout room four. I wanted you to be able to, to go around each room, or maybe for this session I'll go around to the rooms, just to see how they're getting on, um, and I'll figure out how I need to, how you can do that in the next session. Okay. Um, yeah. It seems that it hasn't given you the right to do that, I don't know why, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll, I want to go around and see how they're kind of talking to each other, or whether they're just sitting in silence. Um, <laughs> that sometimes happens. <laughs> And I have to give them a nudge, you know, <laughs> some pointers. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'll disappear and I'll, I'll reappear in a few minutes. But <laughs> I, I haven't left the session, so stay online. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Hari Bo. Hari Bo. in Iskan doing Pujari service uh, on the altar worshipping the deity doing Pujari service all over the world that that is something that was not common before Prabhupada 
so Prabhupada made some adjustment to the rules and now we have beautiful, beautiful deities, beautiful outfits, beautiful worship, all with this wonderful ladies all over the world engaged in this service. So that's my contribution to the thought of Niyamagraha. A Maharaj has joined us. I can uh, give an example from another point. Yes, sir. Like, uh, uh, we know all uh, Prabhupada gave us 16 rounds daily, 20 minimum minute. Uh, we know that from Bhakti Siddhanta, we spoke mentioned. I mean, that standard, uh, even when Bhakti Siddhanta time, it's uh, very hard, 64. Uh, minimum round, so most of the devotees at the time, especially people or the devotees the outside the very culture, also like me in Indonesia or in Western, uh, they cannot follow the 64 round, it's very difficult. So then Prabhupada make um, yeah, less into half 32 round. But uh, still, some devotees cannot follow. Then again, Prabhupada had to decrease uh, um, the standard to 16 round. Then now we have 16 round. But uh, the principle that uh, Maharaj just now mentioned about the Prabhupada uh, adjusting, but uh, in the principle, still maintain. How chant the Holy Name is the principle. And, uh, Best great number uh, uh, reduced by Prabhupada is uh, some adjustment for us in Kalijuga Islam. And also another thing, uh, in one class, Prabhupada said, mentioned about the standard of how uh, Sanyas uh, is forbidden to uh, riding a motorcycle, yeah, something traveling with the vehicle, something like that. Modern is taken. He's a airplane. He's traveling around the world. So that's that's a different. Well, that was very nice. Yes, you're you're correct. What do you think, Maharaj? Yeah, very good. Very good points. Yeah. Very nice. And, uh, You've got the idea. Um, uh, yeah, I just had two thoughts. So I, I just one thought that came into my mind was um, I remember in uh, one class of being proper, he 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 concluded the class with saying that um, you should be hundred percent Krishna conscious to go back home, back to Godhead, right? And then he gets up and he starts walking down, and then he says ninety percent. Then you can go back. Then he walks a little bit more further. He's an 80 percent, and he, then he puts on his shoes. Then finally, he looks at everybody's. So everybody's like this so lost. And like 80 percent, my God, how is that going to happen? And finally, he regally stops with his shawl and says, "Even 70 percent, it's okay." And he walks off. <laughs> so I thought that was a nice, nice example for how uh, you know the, the principle. Uh, he he just slightly adjusts the principle to so, so that all of us can have a chance to go back home, back to Godhead. So I thought that's a Thank you for being us of such a beautiful story. And Leela Majuri Mataji, you have some thought you want to put towards this? Yes, Prabhu. Um, two things which have come in my mind are expecting to send the beats. Um, uh, through postal and he used to chant one round in the beats and he used to send the name of the uh, disciple to email. So the principle is accepting disciples, that means spreading Krishna consciousness. But uh, Prabhupada used uh, all the technology uh, to spread Krishna consciousness. Um, I have heard that some of his disciples not even met Prabhupada, but they have taken up, uh, his instructions seriously and uh, they are still following the instructions whatever Prabhupada has given. That is one thing. And uh, one more thing is, whatever ingredients Prabhupada had in America, 
when he was giving uh, initiation first time for the 11 disciples. Uh, it was first time he was giving in, uh, initiation. Uh, principle is spreading Krishna consciousness again, accepting disciples because he has to have a disciple so that he can, he can uh, follow the instructions uh, given by his uh, guru. That is spreading Krishna consciousness in the western country. So he could adjust everything there. Finally, he accepted and he did not give any instructions for his disciples. Um, that means uh, following the four regulated principles and all those things initially. He just accepted them, then he made them to follow everything. These are the two things came in my mind. Yeah. Thank you, Mata. That was very nice. Thank you. Mara, do you have some comment on these points these fine devotees gave? No, very nice. Very interesting to hear the devotees' realization. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. So far, they're doing quite good. So I'm going to visit one more group. And then I, I, I visited room four. Oh, you did? How did they get, how did you get, how did you find their discussion? They were doing well, very well. They were all good, com good. coming up with points, yeah. Excellent, excellent, good. So Anubhav Prabhu, you joined us a little late. You're, can you turn your audio on, Anubhav Prabhu? I'm going to see room one and room maybe two. Let's see room one.
class now? Huh? Are you giving class now? Yeah. Krishna Krishna Prabhu? So is he calling me? Yeah. Krishna Krishna Prabhu. Yeah. Can you talk to him? Hari Bal, what happened? Hari Bal Maharaj, we seem to have lost you from the class. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm trying to get, I don't know, I'm sitting here. I'm, I, I'm not in the room. What happened? You, you have to add me. Okay, I have to reconnect, huh? Okay. Yeah, you reconnect, then I can, then I can let you in. <laughs> I have to go back to the Zoom, is it? Please, please, yes. Please go back to the Zoom. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <laughs> I was wondering where to start. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting here, I was also wondering, what am I going to do, my goodness? What's the password again? Uh, yes. oh, hold on. One zero zero eight zero. One, it's one zero zero eight zero one. Zero one. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, it's kind of now. Okay, Maharaj is back with us. <laughs> Just waiting for his audio to reconnect, I think. Okay. Oh, no. Maharaj, can you unmute yourself? Yes. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, can we, should we have uh, feedback from the groups? Yes, I think so. I, I heard some interesting conversations going on, so. Good. Maybe I can put some of the responses up on a on a on a whiteboard while you're while they're feeding back. That would be a good idea. Yes, let's put some okay. things up on the whiteboard. Yeah. Can everybody see this? Yes. 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 Wait, yes. Can see the whiteboard. Okay. So next, what I'll do is you can see how I'm going to do it now. Next time, we'll invite one of you to do the whiteboarding, um, so that we try to stimulate a bit more of a classroom experience as well. Okay, so, Maharaj, if you'd like to invite one of the groups to speak. All right. Well, let's start group number four. I know they had some very good uh, ideas. Okay, group four. Was that us? Yes. Yes, Jagannathai Prabhu, group four. Oh, okay. We had, a, yeah, a lot of a good discussion. Um, uh, let's see, um, Vidadhar Prabhu was talking about how Prabhupada took the, the standard from Bhakti Siddhanta from 64 rounds to 16 rounds and made that a, a, a standard. Um, uh, Mataji was saying that Prabhupada as a sannyasi traveled in airplanes and and did a lot of things with technology that generally sannyasis don't do, like giving initiation by putting the beads in the mail and mailing people initiation beads, which is something very different. Um, and then, um, uh, um, Prabhu, I forgot your name, Chandra, some, you were saying that... What, yeah, Prabhupada gave a class, and then after the class, he was saying, 100%, 100% Krishna conscious, and then this is in the, in the memories video from Jayapataka Swami. Then he said, and everybody was very downcast, and then he said, okay, 90%, and then he got up and started walking, and people were still like, 90% Krishna conscious. And he said, no, okay, 80%, and still everybody was, was like, how can that be? And then at the end, Prabhupada said, okay, okay, 70%, and, and then walked out. So Prabhupada is, is still encouraging everybody so that you can feel like, okay, I don't have to be 100% Krishna conscious to go back to Godhead. And then my little contribution was, Prabhupada gave uh, the ladies brahminical initiation 
and in ISKCON temples throughout the world, the ladies are very, very important in doing pujari service, dressing deities, RT, so many things which are very unique. Uh, nowhere else do you see ladies on the altar and doing deity worship like in ISKCON. Okay, good. Can we go to another group to give one of the other groups a little a bit of a chance as well? Yeah. Um, maybe group one. Who's in group one? Raktim Prabhu can speak, he was taking notes. Okay, Raktim Prabhu? Yes, Prabhuji, Hare Krishna. Don't Hare Krishna. Um, so there are many points that were similar with the previous group, uh, like we also like we discussed how Prabhupada reduced the rounds. Uh, one new point would would be uh, how Prabhupada's restriction of food items uh, uh, compared to how in Gorya Mat, if so many foods were restricted, lots of high standard. And uh, Prabhupada was flexible with the food, uh, what devotees could eat in Ekadashis also. And uh, and then we discussed giving initiation to Mataji's deity worship was another point. Prabhupada's high standard he maintained on rules and regulation of deity worship. Uh, and then uh, Prabhupada's Prabhupada using his intelligence in preaching. Uh, that was one point. His uh, quality to compromise. And the last point was demigod worship. How many, many uh, people in India have different ideas and uh, they have, they're so distracted and deviated from the real uh, knowledge, uh, Prabhupada uh, made it very clear that Krishna is the Supreme Personality and stressed upon only worshipping on to Krishna and that will also cover the demigod and they will be, they will be happy. <clears throat> that, 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 that's all we covered. Okay, good. Um, anybody, and, and one of the other groups, maybe? So maybe we can go to, let me just go to group. Group five. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Radhika Kishori here. So, Prabhu, on behalf of my group, I, I would like to uh, share the points that we discussed. So, so we elaborately, uh, uh, in short, in brief, we discussed about the three main aspects uh, on Niyamagra. One was chanting, one of one was food, prasadam, and one was on Matapis. Uh, so, uh, some points are similar to whatever I was discussing in the previous group. 64 rounds were recommended and Srila Prabhupada got it to 16 rounds. Then Srila Prabhupada, other two points that I would like to add here uh, yes. are uh, Prabhupada always recommended that we should chant in Brahma Murta, but at the same time he was practical enough if anyone has services in uh, morning, he would uh, allow them to chant in day. He would say that uh, doing service is also important. So he was practical in that way. And same, uh, also one another incident was uh, someone always asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, uh, what if I don't complete my rounds, 16 rounds in a day? So Prabhupada mentioned that uh, if you do not have time to eat and sleep, then it's okay if you don't complete your rounds and do it on the next day. But if you're not, if you have time to eat and sleep, that means you should definitely chant on the same day. So <laughs> he was stuck. He was uh, he was always on the principles of chanting, completing 16 rounds on the same day. But at the same time, he was practical enough. Uh, that was on chanting about food prashadam um, he also mentioned that uh, according to place circumstances and time 
we can decide what is following the rules and regulations we can decide what is uh, best option following the rules and regulations which are prescribed also one example which uh, we discussed was about uh, shud about topa disciple shutakirti prabhu who mentioned that once during um, once during uh, during some uh, he was going through some health issues and propad recommended him you should have garlic so that uh, you would feel better but shutakirti prabhu hesitated and said propad no propad said i am saying you have it you should have it so propad said if you are using your health and your body for krishna consciousness and sometimes you have to have something then it's okay but you should also stick to the principles that are being given by me uh, only because propad said he had it otherwise he would never have it at the same time the second point that we discussed about prashadam was uh, fasting when there when there, there are special occasions when we fast uh, on ekadashis and other festivals so propad recommended that uh, we should prioritize on our health also with respect to fasting uh, health is most important so uh, and if you have services it's okay if you consume ekadashi prasadam on the festival days instead of doing narjala so that is what he recommended so he was practical enough also at the same time he also mentioned if you are above 60 and if your body doesn't allow you to fast you should have you should consume ekadashi prasadam uh, it's okay if you don't uh, do narjala that was some practical thing that propat recommended then he attracted everyone by prashadam that is what we discussed and is kon gulab jamuns were like the bullets that is what some prabhu mentioned and uh, yeah so he started food for life uh, yeah so knowing that at the same time like many people suffer because of like many poor, because of poverty and no food so he mentioned that uh, food is very important aspect and it can attract many people so he always recommended on focused on the quality and quality of the prashadam and at the same time he also mentioned that uh, devotees inside and out, as well as uh, people outside should be taken care with the food standards that is what we discussed and the third aspect that we discussed was mataji's okay very so, good all right let's 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 all right we what we better do then is better stop there otherwise we'll run out of time Um, I'm sorry, you didn't all get to all get to speak there. <laughs> um, so let's hand back over to Maraj. Otherwise, we we run out of time as well. All right. Thank you very much. Very nice to see everyone's contribution there. A lot of thought went into all all of these things. Very nice. Uh, let me see. I think I I want to share the screen. Right. Yeah. I'll just share the screen. and then we'll go back to that powerpoint mm. okay mm. slide show so we talked about niyamagraha here's an example from the chaitanya charitamrita some of you may be familiar with it describes how shri chaitanya mahaprabhu had his servant govinda and govinda stepped over the body of lord chaitanya to give him a massage but then he wouldn't step over his body again after the massage so Prabhupada explains this is transgressing a lesser rule for a higher rule. The lesser rule was stepping over the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but, but the higher rule was serving the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, for the purpose of giving service to Lord Chaitanya, Govinda stepped over his body, so that was allowed. but he didn't go he didn't he wouldn't step over his body again because he thought i'm just going to eat prasadam so that's for my sense gratification so therefore he waited till chaitanya mahaprabhu woke up so it's a very nice example of 
transgressing the rule for a higher purpose. And Maharaj Sachidananda Prabhu has his hand raised. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's hear from him. Uh, my, a, question, a question to that. Uh, how is it decided that a rule is lesser or higher? I mean, transgressing the lesser rule for the higher. So how it, it is decided by the Acharya himself? Or yes, by... I mean, how does one get intelligence for that? Yeah, by intelligence, right? Intelligence comes from the heart, from the super soul. Krishna says, from me comes knowledge, remembrance and forgetfulness. So from... You know, I think it's not a difficult point to understand that uh, the higher purpose was to give service to the Lord and the lower purpose was to step over the body of the Lord. Generally, we wouldn't step over the body of a person, but for the sake of giving service to him, then we could do it. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also had told Govinda, no, you do it if you, if you it's up to you, do what you want. He said, I, he said, I'm not going to move, but if you want to give me a massage, then you do it. So Govinda used his intelligence, he was a very, he was the god-brother of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but he'd been asked by Ishwara Puri that go and serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, go to Puri and serve him. He'd been the servant of his own spiritual master, Ishwara Puri, who was also the guru of Lord Chaitanya. But Ishwara Puri told Govinda at the time Ishwara Puri was leaving the body, he said, you go and serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. After I leave the body, you go to Puri and you serve there. So he was a very intelligent devotee, very thoughtful person, and he used his intelligence to understand that he could transgress the lower rule. The lower rule was simply to step over the body, but the higher rule was to give service to the body. Now, I remember also one time, maybe you've also heard this past before, there was one one devotee, he was Prabhupada's secretary, he was serving as a secretary for Srila Prabhupada, and he was a sannyasi, so Prabhupada told him, he said, I want you to go to Eastern Europe and preach in Eastern Europe. At that time, of course, Eastern Europe was still socialist and locked down, pretty much. So the devotee said to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, I can't go there though, they all eat meat there, there's no vegetables there in the winter. How can I go there? But Prabhupada said, then eat meat, but go there. <laughs> so Prabhupada was giving this similar principle. The lower principle was, you know, be vegetarian, but the higher principle was preaching. And so for the sake of preaching, you can go against these lower principles. Sometimes you have to accept these. I mentioned this point yesterday. Sometimes for the sake of preaching, you have to accept some little bit deviations, some little austerities, things which we wouldn't normally do. But the important thing is preaching. So you have to think up like this. So Maharaj, like it was clarified by Prabhupada, but if, when situation comes in our own practical life, so I mean, I, then uh, as far as I understand, it should be clarified first with Prabhu Maharaj or some inner devotees, then it should be done. Is that correct? I mean, if, if we need to make some adjustments for the lower and higher principles. Well, if the opportunity is there, then you clarify with the spiritual master or with the senior devotee. Sadhu, Shastra and Guru, there are, are, they are our authorities, right? If Guru is not available, then a senior Vaishnava can always clarify. But, you know, a little understanding, we can see there's lower principles and higher principle. Higher principle is giving direct service to the spiritual master. Or for just like the lower principle, well, we're, let's go ahead, we'll see some more examples of this rule, because we'll see, it, it's, a, it's a principle, that some rules lower and then something's higher, something's more important, what's more, what has a greater need, we have to understand that. Let's see some more examples, then it may become more clear to you. We'll go ahead, right? So here's a quote from Srimad Bhagavatam about great acharyas, 
and how they adjust different things according to the time and place, different climates, situations, different parts of the world. If one has to discharge his duties to preach the message of the Lord, he must be expert in adjusting things in terms of time and place. Srimad Bhagavatam 199. Take a note of it. So he said, all the great Acharyas adjusted the religious principles in terms of time and place. And here's the example. Brahmacharis strictly prohibited to see a young woman. But what can be done? In Western countries, boys and girls mix very freely. And Prabhupada said, if I say, my dear boys, you cannot even see a young girl, then finished. My business there is finished. Therefore, I have to arrange according to the country, according to the circumstances, as far as possible. So gradually, they are coming to the perfectional stage. So Prabhupada understood the mood in the Western world. That if you simply try to separate the men and the women, practically impossible. But let the ladies come and they also do service. Our Krishna consciousness movement would not be what it is today if the women had not come in. And as, one, as the devotee noted how nicely they perform the deity worship, not only deity worship, they distribute books, they preach, and they do so many things. And they're a great help in the Krishna. If we have, but if we have no women, it would be a very different atmosphere. So, uh, so we have to adopt Desha Kalapatra according to time, according to we are keeping our principle as it is, but making arrangement according to the circumstances that is required. So, 1973, Srimad Bhagavatam lecture in Delhi. A preacher must strictly follow rules and regulations laid down in Shastra, yet at the same time devise a means by which the preaching work to reclaim the fallen may go on with full force. And we can see some examples here. As some of you mentioned, across the ocean, allowed women, brahmacharinis, Prabhupada did fire sacrifice for marriages for some disciples. Prabhupada accepted Guru Puja in front of the deities. Prabhupada allowed devotees to distribute books dressed in civilian clothes. And Prabhupada also took the title Prabhupada, surprising his god brothers. But what principles did Prabhupada keep? If you ever get money, print books, don't waste for sense gratification. And strictly following four principles. If somebody would say, I can only keep three principles, then they wouldn't get initiation. And there was one time uh, devotees, uh, they wanted to get initiation, they were only chanting 12 rounds. They, were, they said, we're very busy with our work. We can only chant 12 rounds. Can we get initiation? Prabhupada said, no. You first chant 16 rounds. Then you can get initiation. And someone may say, well, I, if we only have three principles, it will be much easier. Why do we have to have four principles? Let's just make it three principles. Then what will be the result? No pure devotees. There will be no pure devotees. If you're only following three principles, then you're not Krishna conscious anymore. It's, it makes a big difference. So Prabhupada was very strict about these kind of things. Who could stay in the temple? Nobody's staying in the temple who is lazy. Everyone has to do some work. And somebody's crazy, they've got mental problems, they're also not fit to stay in the temple. But everyone should have a spiritual master. 
It's another quote. This one's from uh, an Acharya in the Ramanuja Sampradaya. Prabhupada often quotes the Sri Vaishnavas. So he remarks in his commentary that you can, you can initiate people like Chandalas, people who are born outside the Vedic culture, lower than Sudra, they can also be initiated. Formalities have to be slightly changed here and there to make them Vaishnavas. That's the fourth canto, chapter 8, verse number 34, purport. One meaning of Niyamagraha is to follow the rules and regulations without understanding the purpose of the rules. What is the purpose? The purpose is to awaken love for Krishna, love for Krishna, to begin our to develop our love for Krishna, and we've quoted the relevant verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita. So love of Krishna is in everyone's heart, has to be awakened. So this is the purpose of following the rules. In relation to Prabhupada accepting Guru Puja in front of the deities, we described here how it was explained by uh, His Holiness Giriraj Swami, very senior devotee, disciple of Srila Prabhupada. And he said, said, when Prabhupada was asked about it, our goal is to develop love for Krishna. That is more important than the little rules and regulations. In other words, Prabhupada thought Guru Puja will help us to develop love for Krishna more than just simply following the rule not to worship somebody in the temple. So the lower rule and the higher rule. Hmm? The acharya can guide us to understand the proper perspective. Okay, then going on about uh, understanding what kind of associate, who to associate with, what kind of people not to asso associate with. We said as asat sangat. Oh, what is it? Um, mm, Ajahara prayashas prachalpu niyamagraha jana sangha. Jana sangha. So, people who are not devotees, ordinary people, we give up these kind of people. Mayavadis, pretenders, and atheists. They don't believe in Krishna. They're not really, they're not devotees. So, okay. We, we, don't, we don't consider them enemies, but at the same time we're not going to associate intimately with them. And here's a scriptural quote to support this. Of course there are many about, in, in terms of association, who to associate with. But this is a, a very good, very common one, often given. Better to accept the miseries of being encased within bars and surrounded by burning flames than to associate with those bereft of Krishna consciousness. Such association is a very great hardship. Now, of course, very difficult for many of us to apply this. We know today our movement is more congregational based. Many devotees are not living in the temple. And they're living home, and often the, the, where they live, the family members or the people they live with are not devotees. So how to do it? How to adjust it? What, what can be done? Should they go and live in a burning, in a, in a cage, surrounded by burning flames? <laughs> no, we should understand such association is certainly a hardship. Somehow you have to tolerate if you cannot adjust it, if you don't have the ability to change it, you have to simply tolerate. Hmm. So we accept it as our karma, just like material body may have health problems, we have to accept this is my karma, Krishna put me into this situation. But we should, you know, a devotee has to cultivate tolerance, we have to 
cultivate the Vaishnava qualities. And we should think that Lord Krishna has put me into this situation to help me develop more tolerance and compassion. Prabhupada always had uh, compassion on such people. We don't hate them. We don't have any enemies. Devotees don't have enemies. But we have compassion. We feel sorry for them. And we do what we can to try to help them help them to develop Krishna Consciousness. Of course, they may not be interested in Krishna Consciousness, but at least let, let them have some respect for a devotee. So it all depends how we deal with them. So friendly dealings are very important. Even though they're not devotees, still we should have friendly dealings with them. That's, then that's good. In the future they, they may do more service. Okay, so Jana Sangha, the verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita, which a devotee quoted the other day, right? Asat Sangha Tyagi Vaishnavacha. Give up the association of those who are too much attached to the opposite sex, illicit association with the opposite sex outside of marriage, association with one's wife not according to religious principles, these kind of things, right? So, uh, a little, I don't know, have we got time? How much time have we got? We have um, about 10 minutes remaining. We don't have time for this exercise. Okay. Anyway, we had a good exercise this morning, but uh, if we had more time, we could reflect on the attitudes and behavior I've advocated here. Hmm? Okay, so uh, we'll skip that learning experience and uh, we'll ask, have, have we got to go, I think we've got to deal with some questions now, some of the questions are there. We had some questions um, yesterday that I sent you on your WhatsApp. Would you like me to read them out? Yeah, could you read one at a time and I'll answer them? Sure, of course. Just bear with me one sec. Okay, so we had... Yesterday, yes. Can we accept food, prasadam, in the Sri Vaishnav temples, especially in South India, like the Udupi Krishna temple? Oh, absolutely, no problem. Yeah, we have their Vaishnavas, so we can accept their food. Actually, I remember I, I went to Tirupati when they install, installed deities there at Tirupati, and they brought the Ramanuja devotees there to come and do the installation of the deities. So certainly we can take prasadam from Sri Vaishnavas. Okay. Thank you. Um, the next question was, while preaching, we have to build rapport with people and we have to speak worldly matters. When speaking worldly matters, is this prajalpa, if it's directly related to our preaching, is I guess what the question is. Well, when speaking worldly matters, the idea is that we can bring it around to a Krishna conscious perspective, because everything in the world is in relation to Krishna. So that's the expertise of the devotee, that they can speak worldly matters, but then bring in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, nice, that's, that's very true. Um, then somebody is asking, what is the difference between Prayashas and Lolyam? Uh huh. Prayashas and Lolyam. This Lolyam, this greed, is also described to be uh, this is like some restlessness of the mind, and that one may think about uh, 
when we think even about other opinions, may be looking at other spiritual processes, we may think actually everything's not here in bhakti, that we need to also, maybe we need to go also include a little bit pranayama, a little bit astanga, we need to look somewhere a little bit outside the bhakti path. So that is uh, lovyam, that we're thinking everything is not there. Prayashas, that's talking about the, you know, the intense endeavor for things which are opposed to bhakti. That, uh, prayashas can be like, you know, hard labor, to, trying to get more wealth, trying to, and sometimes the karmis will do great austerities. And the Gyani, he's trying to cultivate more knowledge as well. Somebody wants to get more knowledge, become a scholar. Somebody's trying to improve their economic condition. They're thinking that, you know, have to, be, have, to have more money, it's not enough. So they make great endeavors, they do great austerities simply to, get, try, to try to get wealth. And of course, it doesn't mean they'll be successful, but they're trying. And then they sacrifice their bhakti for it. Their objective is not bhakti, their goal is not bhakti, but they've got some material, they're blinded by material thoughts. So that is, that is prayashas. But loyam is this, you know, this looking outside of, again, looking outside of bhakti, looking at other paths, the restlessness of the mind. Okay? Okay, um, and then we've got some other people here asking questions. Let's go to Murali Govinda Prabhu first. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji. Uh, Maharaj, I have my God brother and he is my counsellor also. Generally used to share in all the substance uh, as in uh, uh, inspirational quote of how he was doing all sinful activities before coming into Krishna consciousness. Suppose in my preaching, if I refer that, will it be like uh, <clears throat> committing an offense to my God brother and Vaishnava? Because it always inspires the people sitting in the audience. Like how he was earlier, after coming to Krishna consciousness, what is the transformation that took place in him? And how he has become a good devotee and uh, he is serving the devotee community. Yes, I would be a bit cautious about talking things like that. It may be taken the wrong way. You definitely want to be careful about bringing up a person's past, even though you're reflecting that now look at him, is so great. But if you simply say, there are people who before become, but you don't need to mention names, you don't need to point to people. But if you refer to a person, to a, a particular individual, it's not very nice. That, that, Thank you, Thank you very that's much. my thinking on it. Okay, then we have um, Karuna Sindhu Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, in the first chapter there are two Sanskrit terms, Avirodh Priti and Virod Yukta Krodha. Could you please explain on that? Oh. Well, Srila Prabhupada has explained them in the text, right? That yes, first chapter, first chapter. Avirod, Avirod Priti, that's how it describes it, the, the desires, just simply the desires to get material sense gratification. We want to have many things, we want, we want to satisfy our senses, and Avirodha Yukta Priti, the anger which comes when you don't get it. The anger after frustration, sometimes we get the things we want, we're disappointed, we didn't get the happiness we want, we become angry. So the anger comes due to the frustration that our senses were not satisfied. So 
So th that's how Srila Prabhupada, you know, that's how Srila Prabhupada explained it. I haven't seen the term used any other place except in nectar of instruction. Okay. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Okay, so um, then Harsha Danwani Mataji is asking, um, Maharaj, in cases where there is a lot of office and housework to be done, and if the health is not good, is it necessary to do 16 rounds on a japa beads only and arti to be done standing in one place with the items? Well, you mean 16 rounds, you may like to use a clicker, you mean a, 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 another a device rather than japa beads, is it? Yes, I think that's what it is. So, mm, yes, it's also allowed. Some yes. devotees, they also have, they do like that. They will chant some rounds on their, you know, mechanical device. Not so convenient to always take your beads or have your beads with you to chant, but you can use a, a device, a clicker we often call it, right? Yes. <laughs> use a clicker to count, chant your rounds. Yes. When, I, when I'm in London and I go to the office, then I take a clicker because it's not a great place to have my chanting beads because there are people in the office who eat meat and, you know, touch different surfaces and I don't want to leave my beads lying around. For yeah, right. Yeah. 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 And some people even stick a, they will stick a tosi, tosi on the clicker so that, yes. you, you know, you can, do, you can do like that. So that when you touch the clicker, you're touching tosi. Yes. rather than a metal clicker. Yes. And, uh, and the other point is about, uh, do you have to stand in one place to do RT? Yes. Well, I don't know what your program is. You know, RT, it's not compulsory that you have to do RT. It's nice that you're doing it. You know, we don't see that, it, you know, that, they, that you have to do an RT every day. But, you know, certainly you should know how to do RT and from time to time we should offer RT. If you're doing RT at home, in your house, then yes, usually you offer RT, you stand in one place. I don't know how you yes. could do RT without standing in one place. <laughs> I'm a bit puzzled how you're going to do it. You're going to do it on the run, on the move? A, a mental RT? I'm not clear what she means. But yes, you should be in one place, I think, if you're going okay, to do so, arti. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. So we have three minutes left, um, and there are a lot of questions still to come. Um, <laughs> but I also have a couple of announcements. So I'm going to just ask one more question from Sachidananda Prabhu, who, who sent one yesterday. <clears throat> Um, he wanted some advice on regarding Janasanga. Janasanga, Janasanga. Is there a lot of, there is a lot of it being done these days by devoted social media, which is at times very alluring and distracting. And he would like some advice on how to handle this. Mm. Well, everything depends up on the individual, how much the individual is serious to cultivate Krishna consciousness. Some things are good for us and some things are bad for us. And if one is associating with non-devotees, non-Krishna conscious topics, it's not going to help our Krishna consciousness. It's not encouraged. We cannot enforce it. However, you know, it, we can't force people that you can't do these things, you can't listen to this. It's up to everyone for, for themselves. How serious are they to become Krishna conscious? If they're serious to become Krishna conscious, then they will avoid these things. So we have to preach about it. Not that you have to go directly to someone and say, you can't do this. But we do have to preach about it. We have to you know, talk sometimes when you give classes and so on, mention how the evils of these things, how they pollute the mind and make it difficult for us to remember Krishna. 
so we that that has to be done and uh, hopefully people will take up, pick up on the message but if we simply you know go to people and say this is maya that you simply will make enemies uh, it won't really help but we want to encourage people, we want to have nice dynamic programs, nice festivals, create a nice atmosphere with the devotees and inspire them in Krishna consciousness. And the more they're inspired in Krishna consciousness, the less they will feel attracted to this Jana Sangha. Okay? Thank you. Uh, somebody, someone asked also, I saw the question there in the chat that you sent, that someone's saying that, you know, I was very enthusiastic in the beginning, but after a while, after coming to Krishna, after some time it becomes monotonous, it becomes boring, I don't have the same enthusiasm. What to be done? What can I do? Oh, this is, this is a common problem. You have to, you have to look. You have to become more involved, take up some responsibility, get some service, put your heart more into devotional service. Don't let this happen to you. The mind is the enemy and your mind is being your enemy. The mind is saying, oh no, not this again. Oh no, not chanting. Oh no. You have to control the mind, make the mind a friend, get it to surrender to Krishna. You have to become eager. We said enthusiasm, utsahand is very important. You have to have enthusiasm, patience, the confidence. So if you don't have that enthusiasm anymore, you had it in the beginning, that's, then you've got to find it again. What happened to your enthusiasm? The same activities, the same program, you have to rekindle that enthusiasm. You can be enthusiastic, you just have to dive into the service, grab hold of a service, take up some service, get involved, start, start getting involved, doing some nice activities, go in the kitchen and help cook, join the kirtan, go for sankirtan, get, get involved, you know. Uh, there's so many nice programs going on all over the world. It's so amazing, so many wonderful things. And people are saying, oh, I'm not enthusiastic anymore. There are so many enthusiastic people. Get involved with them. And you can also become enthusiastic. Enthusiasm is contagious. If you want to be enthusiastic, you can. But you've got to conquer the mind. Okay. Thank you. So, um, I have a couple of announcements. Apurva Nilateshwari, Mataji, can I ask you to put your um, question on the group? I'm sorry we didn't get around to you, so we've reached the end of our time today, but we can come back to your question for Monday. Um, so if you put it on the group, I'll pass it on to Maharaj um, to consider over the weekend. Thank you. Um, so, a couple of announcements. Um, so, tomorrow, um, we have a optional session for learning shlokas for those of you who wanted to some some pointers and some guidance around that. I'll facilitate that session from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. India time on the same Zoom link. I'll post that link again around 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Um, that will be 1.30 p.m. Australia time. 10.30 a.m. Bali time, 6.30 a.m. in the United Arab Emirates, and I can't remember what that would be in Los Angeles. Um, so you'll have to figure that one out, but I'll, I'll put a message on the group. Anyway, so just so you all know, um, I'm trying to make it as easy for you as possible. So come along to that session if you want to talk about shlokas, if you want to help each other learn shlokas. There's some um, techniques that I can show you, um, go, go through with you, um, and also then you might want to pick somebody to pair up with remotely who can also help you learn shlokas if you want to get to know your classmates better, that's something that we sometimes do. So that's tomorrow morning. Those of you who are ready to give any shloka recitations, on Monday, following Monday's class, 
there will be a one and a half hour slot for giving shlokas. So please message me. The two first slots, which are 15 minutes each, have already been taken. So from 10.45 to 11 a.m. and 11 a.m. to 11.15 are already booked. After that, um, the, the, there's some times for those who want to give shlokas. So um, please do contact me and book your slot if you're ready. Um, if you need to speak to me at any time after this class or after any class, you can call me on my WhatsApp number, of course. Um, and now on to the assignment. I'm going to give you a choice of question. question if you turn to page 123 of your handbook, if you are referring to the fifth edition, and if you are referring to the fourth edition, then you need to go to page 114. Both the questions are the same. Actually, I'm going to put this new handbook up on the um, WhatsApp group later because it is relevant, perhaps, that we, we do have the version five going forward. But anyway, for those of you who are looking at the fourth edition of the handbook, please refer to page 114. For those of you who are looking at version five, please refer to page 123. You can choose from either question number one or question number two. Question number one is on controlling the six urges, and question number two is on the importance of avoiding artyahara and priyasasa. So these two questions you have a choice of answering. You only have to answer one. I will not mark two. Okay? Um, your essay should be between six to eight hundred words and no more. If it's a little bit over it, we'll allow it. You know, if it goes to sort of 900 words, 950 words, it's okay. But you'll lose a few marks on the word count. Not many, but it won't, it won't fail you, but you'll lose a couple of marks. The, the word count does not include your, the quotes that you put in. Those are not counted as part of your word count. Only what you write in your own words is counted as your word count. Okay, so you have a choice, and the reason I'm giving you is a, a choice is because it's a big group and it's very boring to mark, very boring to mark the same essay from like 40 people. So <laughs> it gives me something interesting to read. Um, I do tend to mark in quite a detailed way, so you get lots of comments back and lots of feedback. The deadline for submission of this essay will be midnight Indian Standard Time on Monday the 30th of November. So you have 10 days. And they should be emailed to me at my email address, krishnakeshava at myforinstitute.org. And I will just put that email address out again on the WhatsApp group. Again, I'll put this announcement out on the group as well in case anybody's not able to hear me clearly. Um, and in case um, you missed any of it. Okay, any questions? When is the closed book test? Uh, the closed book test, um, I can't remember the date to be honest. Um, just bear with me one second. And I will find the timetable. So the closed book assessment is there's no actual date on the timetable but i'm thinking it's on friday the 22nd of november well we won't have finished will we no hang on oh, no, we i beg your pardon no the date hasn't I, it's my fault sorry i'm reading that completely wrong it's telling me go past me it's the columns have misaligned go past me is on friday the 22nd of um November. The closed book assessment date hasn't been put in the calendar yet. I will know by Monday. So next week we have a full week, right? We have a full week. We have Monday to... Next week, in fact, we have Monday to Saturday. Yes. And Saturday is the last session of this series on the lecture of instruction. And the closed book test is for all the nectar of instruction? All of the nectar of instruction, yes. Okay. okay, there will probably be, 
um, somewhere around maybe 15 or 16 questions um, and maybe a couple of analogies, um, which will be fill in the blanks, I think. So you should learn analogies, which are given in your student handbooks. Um, and the analogies are given in version four of the handbook on page 113 and page 112 in the fifth edition. Are you going, Prabhu? Prabhu, the, this open book, only this one essay for this economy? Uh, for NOI, only one essay. For Sri Isha Panishad, only one essay. Because Isha and NOI form their own unit, unit five. Otherwise, in each other unit, there are two essays um, per book or per section of the book. There will be any other assignment apart of that book? Not until you come to the next um, unit, which is Bhagavad Gita Unit 1. And that assignment will probably be set by His Grace Abhijit Prabhu because he'll be marking those essays. Because I'll be teaching another batch, so I won't have time. Um, so he will, um, he will probably set that question himself. Prabhuji, shloka, shloka test? Yes. So shloka test, you could, if you're ready, ready to give some shlokas, you can book a shloka test slot Sorry. for Monday, um, or you can book a shloka test also for next Friday, I will also take. But there will okay. be many, 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 many opportunities over the coming weeks to do shloka tests. So don't all rush. What, what all shlokas are we supposed to memorize for the test? So um, this was mentioned in your orientation. So if you go to page, I think it's 14. Page 14 of your handbook in version 4 handbook, page 14. And let me just check if it's the same one in. Yeah, it's page 14 in either version of the handbook. There is a list of shlokas there. You can give these shlokas in any order you like. I don't mind. Because I know some people already know some shlokas. You might want to get those ones you already know. You know, like everybody knows 18.66, for example. Um, Sarva Dharma Pritya. So if you, if you know these shlokas, please give them and get them done. Okay? And uh, uh, book, like in the shlokas, it, it just has to be Sanskrit also, or we are supposed to give the translation also? You have to give those. You have to give me the verse reference, i.e., um, for example, if you were giving Bhagavad Gita shloka, you would say Bhagavad Gita 2.7, Garpanya Dosho, Bhagavad etc., and then you would go on to give me the English translation. The English translation doesn't have to be exactly word for word but as close as possible, and certainly it must capture everything that is mentioned in the translation. And like, are there any rules for the test? Because I mean, these things are online and one can always have uh, the uh, book open in front of you and then decide. No, you, you will not be having rules? your, indeed, but you won't be having your book open because you will, this test will be recorded and your eyes will be shut. So oh. your camera must okay. be on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay? okay, and the test will be recorded, video recorded, and kept as my evidence that you have given this shloka appropriately. Um, okay. And you mustn't be wearing any um, earpieces. Okay, so no earpieces and eyes shut. So if you are using a, um, you know, one of those microphones that are attached to a set of headphones, um, you'll have to use your computer's mic and. Um, Speakers. Krishna Kesu Prabhu, we have to use only our computer mind. Computer mic. <laughs> yes. Not mic. Mind, not mind. No, not mic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, Indu Lekha Kripa Mataji, you have a question? Yeah. Are you sure, I want to know like, how to book the written thought for. Uh, because I think I personally you regarding the because, uh, So, Mataji, your, your voice isn't clear. I didn't understand what you said. It was very muffled. Uh, I would like to know like how to book the slot for local recitation because already I have messaged you privately that uh, when can I do that? Um, yes, so I was going to message you back with the time today. I think yours is the first one at 10.45 a.m. 
Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. And Nila Madhuri Mataji, yes. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, uh, now shloka recitation will be only pertaining to this Nekra instruction. Correct? You, you can give any shlokas out of this 45 verses that you want. You can give Nectar of Instruction if you are ready with Nectar of Instruction. You can give also, in additionally, something from Bhagavad Gita if you know something from Bhagavad Gita. I leave it to you. I'm not going to make this too difficult because we are all, all online and spread out all over the world. And I don't want to make this a stressful experience. If you've got stuff that you already know, I'm happy to, to take those shlokas as well. So only when we are ready with all 45, we can come to... No, you can give... Can, you, there, there are many opportunities to give the shlokas. So if you want to... You, the only thing I will ask is please give no less than five shlokas in any shloka okay. test. Because otherwise it, it's a okay. waste of time. Okay, so please okay. do five shlokas or more in any session. And we will probably do maybe one or two sessions a week across the next three months. So there will be plenty of opportunity. Yes, yes, yes. So okay. is it like we can we can just we can select any shloka we want to give like from Bhagavad Gita we can start with five shlokas which we uh, which I remember I can give the three straight away. Absolutely. And, uh, yes. Like that. Absolutely. Okay. Just remember because right. at the end of the Bhakti Shastri there will be a random test where I will select ten random shlokas and again your eyes will be shut. And that test is quite difficult because I may say to you, please give me Bhagavad Gita 2.7. Or I may say to you, in the Bhagavad Gita, there is a shloka which talks about the three modes of material nature. And I might give you a little bit of the English translation. And I will ask you to give me the shloka reference to the Sanskrit and the English. I may also recite to you the third, second or third or fourth line of a shloka and ask you to tell me where it comes from, which verse it is, complete the Sanskrit and give me the English translation. I may even ask you for the definition of specific Sanskrit words within the shlokas. And we do this so we don't have to ask you to repeat all 45 shlokas in a very parrot fashion way because then we don't understand actually have you just memorized them or do you actually understand them. Okay, so there, this is quite a difficult test, but this comes right at the end of the Bhakti Shastri. Again, it's a recorded session. It usually takes about 30 minutes per session. So please do pay good attention to learning your shlokas. And if you are having difficulty, please reach out. I'm here to help you. Um, you know, and, and there are many people also here who can also help if, you know, um, if, so, if it works better with somebody else. There are many other people to help. Okay. Prabhu, I would, I, would, I would like to make a point there that the man said just any sloka in the Bhagavad Gita, but it's not just any sloka. There's only certain ones recommended to be yes, memorized. That's right. the, 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 the recommended ones are from page 14. So it's only these shlokas that you must memorize or must give. You can memorize all the shlokas in the Bhagavad Gita if you want. No problem. It's a good thing to do. But the shlokas that I will be specific, you will be specifically tested on are the 45 shlokas given on page 14. And I don't mind which order you give those shlokas in. Okay. Thank you. So regarding, regarding the translation, regarding the translation, it has to be given word by word, or we can just phrase it, it, phrase it in our own words? You, you, and you give phrase it your, I don't mind if you phrase it in your own words, providing that all the points um, in the English translation that Srila Prabhupada has given are captured in your translation. Because I know that some people have, you know, difficulty remembering the English translation word for word. It may not be our first language, for example. But you, I, will, I have a table in front of me, so I mark off, have you mentioned this point? Have you mentioned this point? Have you mentioned this point? And do they actually flow in the same way that Srila Prabhupada has explained the translation? That's the important bit. You must understand um, the translation properly. Okay, any other questions? Uh, just one last thing. I'm, I'm using the um, uh, this uh, edition second with me. I had it a uh, few from piece and back. Sure. Do I need to change or I, like, can we manage? It, this is the handbook, is it? Yeah, handbook. Okay, I, 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 will, I will put an electronic version of the latest version of the handbook 
It's already been posted to the group a couple of times, but I'll keep posting it to the group regularly, say once a week, so that if anybody hasn't downloaded it or if you're out and about somewhere and you need to refer to it quickly, you can always access it from your phones. I'll make it available today. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, all right, well, Thank you very much, um, Maharaj. Thank you for a wonderful class today. I really enjoyed that. And I'm sure everybody else did. Um, I'm looking forward, of course, to Monday's session. And I'm looking forward to seeing those of you who are going to join the Shloka recitation session tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Indian Standard Time. That's 1.30 p.m. in Australia, 10.30 a.m. in Bali, 6.30 a.m. in the United Arab Emirates. And I'm sorry, those of you in Los Angeles, you're just going to have to figure that one out for yourself this time around. But I'll make sure I've got it for next time. Okay, Hare Krishna. Vanchakal Patarupyas Chakripa.